Hi guys, OB Dave here. You may notice a little improvement in image quality there. I've invested, I've got me and Ash a nice new camera for recording stuff, so the audio should be better and the video should be better, but obviously it's just me that's using it here because uh, Ash is baking at hers. Um, it's pastry week. After the disaster that um, was my donuts last week, it was just dreadful. I was absolutely fuming. Um, I've decided to go for something I absolutely love, but again, I've never made before in my life. I'm going for Cornish pasties. So uh, stay tuned and enjoy. Right then, first off, I'm making short crust pastry, which I've never done before in my life. Uh, I've already mixed the ingredients, kind of. That is, let me check. That is 450 grams of plain flour, two teaspoons of baking powder, one teaspoon of salt, and 125 grams of unsalted butter. Um, actually, it's salted butter. I didn't have unsalted. So after I put the teaspoon of salt in there, I kind of like scooped it back out. So hopefully it's not going to be too salty. Um, the only thing is I don't have a big food processor. I was going to get one tomorrow, but it would have been too late. It would have been late for the kids uh, to eat. So I need to get this done tonight. So I have my Nutribullet style thing and I'm just going to have to try and fit everything in, blend it up, even if it takes a couple of goes and just put it back in and then mix it. I think that's the only thing I can do at this point. Unless it'll all fit in, maybe it's going to be deceiving. But at least it's going to get blended up nice. Let this, let's get this thing blended up and then I will be back. Right then, my Nutribullet is dead. It obviously wasn't up to the task of mixing all this together, unfortunately. Uh, so I'm going to have to do it the old fashioned way. It's going to have to be done by hand, which is a nightmare because I've got a bad elbow. That's not bad actually. It's done quite a lot of the work for me. Add in the butter, whiz, and then add in breadcrumbs and then mix. And then add in the water a bit of a, t a bit of time. Egg yolks. There is one egg yolk. That's dead easy. Has me struggling last week to do this. So all the egg yolks have done is just stuck all of the mix to my hands. Add the water a bit of a time, a bit at a time, and mix it. You may not need to add all of the water. freezer bag, put it in the fridge, tidy up and then tomorrow get the oven on, make the filling, make the pasties. Straightforward. I will win pastry week with Cornish pasties. It does just say an hour on the recipe so I'm kind of improvising a bit. Right good stuff. I'm off to play a new Call of Duty game and shoot some fools, so I will see you tomorrow. Hi guys, OB Dave here. It is the next day, so I'm ready to finish off these pasties so we can eat them for dinner tonight. The dough has been in the fridge overnight. It looks good, but it's uh, it's kind of a bit crumbly. It's, it's quite hard and cold, so I'm leaving that for a sec. Just while I work on the uh, on the filling. 
So the filling, firstly, 175 grams of Swede, diced. Got a little bowl right here from scraps, so I'm not going back and forth between the bin. Right, Swede done. Two medium potatoes. One large onion, finely chopped. I've only got little ones, so I'll do two. Three hundred and fifty grams of beef skirt. It says, but I didn't know what that was or chuck steak so I got braising steak the reason I went for that is because I know that in a stew or anything like that it it gets quite soft and tender well now tablespoon of pepper seems like a lot preheat the oven took the pastry out of the fridge roll it up to the flour this is going to be my way for measuring the pastry so we'll put that there get rid of this Right then, time to actually fill the pasties. You've got a good view of this. Also need some cubes of butter to go in there and some egg wash. It's gonna get messy because I don't have a brush for the egg wash. Handful of the mixture. And then we're gonna put a couple of bits of butter. One, two, we'll do three. Three. I'm supposed to egg wash these corners, but I don't have a brush. Fold it. Pinch the edges. Now, the bit I've been dreading. Crimp. Fold over, finger down. Fold over. What? Right then, 50 minutes in the oven. And hopefully, they are good. Hi guys, Africa Nash here. It is pastry week of our couple's bake off. So I, um, it's Sunday today, uh, I started a little early because the recipe for my Danish pastries say to leave the pastry to chill for over eight hours overnight. So I thought I'd do it tonight and then uh, make the custard and bake them uh, on Monday night. So first things first, let's get our apron on and get started. Okay, so I've pre-measured my uh, ingredients to make this nice and quick. Uh, so the first part of the recipe said to get half a cup of milk warmed up uh, over a small saucepan, obviously, or if you've got a microwave, unlike me, you can use a microwave, and it's said to just 40 degrees. So let's get that first. The next bit is to grate uh, 225 grams of butter into a bowl. So let's do that first. Okay. 
So as I said, I have pre-weighed everything. So this is 226 grams of butter. I had it in the freezer for a short while just to help with the grating because it makes it a bit easier. So let's get going. Okay, so I have grated 225 grams of butter and uh, unsalted butter specifically, the recipe called for it so that it hadn't been tested with other types of butter. So, uh, which is fine, I always use unsalted butter. So it now says to return that to the freezer for 10 minutes. So the milk I left a little longer uh, has reached uh, 50 degrees. It should be at 40. So I'm gonna let that cool down in the bowl very quickly. So add in my milk to a small mixing bowl. Yeah, that's still too high. We don't want to kill the yeast because this part of the recipe is to get the yeast to bloom. Okay, next part of the recipe is to uh, prepare the yeast. We are going to encourage the yeast to bloom and uh, obviously reproduce. So what we need to do is obviously take that heated milk off of the pan. Uh, it should be about 40. I've overdone it a little bit. The milk's now sitting at about 47. So I'm going to let that cool down. And then it says to add... Um, one tablespoon of the sugar that we've already weighed out which was 66 grams of sugar for the whole recipe and then it says to add the yeast obviously but we're going to wait for the uh, milk to cool down and we'll be back shortly okay we're back and the milk has cooled down to about 39 degrees now so I'm gonna add my uh, dry active yeast. It says to add eight grams, which is one sachet. So let's pop that in. And it says to leave covered uh, for about 10 minutes until it starts to froth. Our yeast is now really frothy and ready. So it has bloomed really well. So the next part is to mix all my dry ingredients which is 390 grams of plain flour. The rest of the 66 grams of sugar, obviously, or granulated sugar, obviously we took a tablespoon out for the activation of the yeast. And it is also half a teaspoon of salt. Once those are combined, you have to add the butter, the grated frozen butter, oh my gosh, crispy. <laughs> and mix that with my fingers until combined. The next is to whisk half a cup of milk and one egg uh, into the yeast mixture. So add our half a cup of milk, one egg, Once that is mixed, it is time to add it to the dry ingredients, obviously with the frozen and grated butter. <coughs> Excuse me. And then mix into a rough dough. Okay, so the instructions were to mix those all together until it was a sticky, rough mixture, which I have and to cover that with cling film and then leave to chill in the fridge for eight hours. So I'm gonna pop that in the fridge, uh, covered in cling film and leave it until tomorrow where I'll roll, well, where I will roll it out and make the custard for the Danish pastries. See you guys tomorrow. Hey guys, so it is Monday. Um, my pastry has been chilling and is out of the fridge now, ready to be rolled out and shaped into our Danish pastries. But the instructions did say, first of all, to make my custard for the filling of the Danish pastries. I'm gonna use the same recipe I used for custard week for the custard cookie cups. It's just, it turned out really nicely and I really enjoyed making it. So I'm comfortable with that recipe, I guess. But let's get into it. Let's make our custard. Three cups of milk and the teaspoon of the vanilla bean paste. Get that simmering. Right, the next part was four egg yolks. And we need the one cup of milk. 
half a cup of corn flour and the sugar, two thirds of a cup of sugar. Okay, so that is the hot milk and uh, vanilla bean paste, all nice and hot and ready. So I'm gonna slowly add it now to my egg mixture. Without curdling, we're gonna do it right. Um, okay, so it took ages for my custard to thicken. I really started to worry that I'd done something wrong, but no, I must have just not had it hot enough and I probably was stressing, but it's a nice thick custard. So it needs to just cool down. Now I need to roll out my pastry. So now to do the laminating. Oh my gosh. Okay. So I need to fold it out into a square. Ah, a rectangle, sorry. And then it's said to fold, fold, and fold, and then do it again. Yeah, one more time, I think. I think one more time. So, get some flour and then the surfaces. Okay, fold, fold, and then fold. I'm probably doing this really wrong. You're gonna like kill me in the comments, but. I'm sure that's what the instruction said. Maybe I'm reading it wrong. Maybe this person does it wrong and I'm following the wrong person, but I'm sure it'll turn out to be a pastry. One eternity later. <laughs> okay. Then it said to let it rest before folding it in on itself. No, that was it. I can fold it in to make the, the, the shape of the Danish pastry, but I'm not to press it down for the custard just yet. I have to let it rest. So I'm going to quickly shape them like a saw. Uh. Okay, so I have shaped my Danish pastries in the way that the instructions uh, suggested. I got some extra pastry that I just kind of mashed together. <laughs> Don't know what that'll turn out to be, but Extra pastry is always better than no, not enough pastry. So I'm going to put them back in the fridge to chill for a little bit because it did say to rest before adding the custard and the custard's still quite warm. So um, I'm going to do that and then have my dinner and then come back and bake them. So I'll see you guys shortly. Okay, so I've had some dinner. Sorry if it's around my face. Uh, the pastries have uh, chilled and relaxed as the recipe said. I have uh, put some grease proof, grease, grease proof paper down, oh my gosh, grease proof paper down in my baking trays and now the recipe said to push down and create an indent then add the custard and jam. So I mean they also suggested apricots but I don't know. Okay so that seems to be working quite well, yeah, that seems okay. I didn't, I forgot to buy white chocolate to decorate, so they're not true Danish pastries, but I can see the lamination, so I think I've achieved that, which was the main thing about pastry week. So custard going in, and I know I've got so much custard, I might as well be generous. Oh, I got it everywhere. It's so typical of me. <laughs> Why? Why do I get it everywhere? Oh my gosh. That's all I apparently have space for in my baking trays. Maybe I can make it work a little bit better. So now, to bake. Let's put them in the oven. Okay, so I'm gonna take the first batch out of the oven. Um, I've seen some lamination when I was checking on it mid-bake. I have got a temperature, uh, th well, an oven thermometer now, so I know what temperature I was baking at. So I've done it at 170 degrees and just seen how it's gone, but let's have a look. Ooh, oh my gosh, it's so big. Time. I mean, you can see the lamination. I don't know. Oh, they still feel a bit. I 
don't know. I can't. <laughs> Are they baked? I mean, they feel like they're baked. They started to go brown, but they look like they're a little warm. Maybe it's just because they're still hot and the custard's still hot. I kind of want to. No, the bottom's brown. The bottom's brown. Yeah, no, they are baked. I'm stressing. I'm always stressing. Oh, it's so hot. No, the bottom's golden brown, definitely. So I think they just need to sit and rest. Um, I'm gonna try and get the rest of them in on another baking tray and uh, then we'll pack them up and take them to Dave's for tomorrow for the testing. And we'll see you guys there. Hi guys, OB David. African Ash. Together we are OB Dave and African Ash and the dishwasher's just started making loads yeah. of noise. He's uh, joined in for our video. <laughs> <laughs> it's typical, isn't it? Um, yeah, it is pastry week and I'm feeling significantly less salty than I did last week. Yeah. I think I've actually done okay. Like the kids are currently sat being neglected. I'm only joking. The, <laughs> the kids are uh, currently sat eating a Cornish pasty. They, they have been raving about it. They're enjoying um, it, so yeah, I'm, I'm buzzing because I was gambling on the pasties being okay because that's dinner. Tonight. Even even the pickiest of eater out of the two of them was instantly like, I love it! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so I mean, we've got a GoPro on here. So you can see, it's doing out really good. I'm really happy with it. Um, Have you seen my lamination of my pastry? Yeah, I'm so why don't you tell everyone what you did, even though they know. <laughs> you got to watch the video. So I did uh, Danish pastries. I forgot to buy the white chocolate, so I didn't do the whole garnish. But I'm really proud because I've never really made pastry from scratch. And even when you search recipes, they always go and roll out the store bought pastry. So literally, it took me like a couple of days to search to actually find a recipe. Most recipes will say, just go and buy roll out pastry. Yeah. So this was my first time. So I'm really proud to see the lamination. So yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. I think it is great too. Well, I think we try yours first because mine's currently cooling down. Yes. Because uh, uh, anyone who's eaten a Cornish pasty before will know that it's like napalm inside for quite a while. <laughs> so, and you've just heated yours up slightly as well. Yeah, the they've oven. been sat in the car. This is the unfortunate side of like, we need to work on the lighting situation in here for this. Yes, we do. Here you go. But look how beautiful that lamination is. I'm well proud of that. It does look good. Kind of cheating that you did custard again for a second week. On uh, I still made it from scratch. That is not cheating. Did you make your meat from scratch? Yeah. So you grew a cow outside? Yeah. Right. Butchered it myself. That's how I hurt my elbow. No, you didn't. I mean, mm. I'm very proud of that. Mm. They've gone a bit soft now because they've been sat overnight yet again. But last night they were dead fresh and lovely. Flavour wise, mm. that is a pano chocolat. That is a. Uh, um, my mind's just gone blank. Croissant. Croissant. It's it just, is the same you, kind of pastry. You've, you've got the, the flavours just mm. perfect. Thanks. I mean, I'm dead proud. Obviously, they've gone a bit soft. They were super flaky last night. Course was great. Of course. <laughs> I will just go and check what they want quickly. Absolutely. I really like that. I mean, a really yeah. nice. You've done a good job. Thank you. I'm so proud. You alright? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> but we'll be through in a minute, okay? <clears throat> yeah, apparently the lamination is the hard part, and I'm dead proud. You can see all the different layers. Mm. You've done well, eh? It, they were proper flaky yesterday. <clears throat> I definitely think, and I did I did consider it, I thought, should I take them two days and cook them here, but with you cooking your pasties at the same time, I just thought it's just going to become a cluster in the, in the kitchen. I think. We're going to need to cut this. I definitely need to work on the lighting in here though. Mm -hmm. There is a light there. But right, I'm going to cut into one of the pasties mm -hmm. so we can see. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try and eat mine the traditional way. <laughs> Let's, uh... I think it's every time you step towards the camera it's adjusting because then you're suddenly in shadow. There's not really. The light's above us so it's making shadows on our faces. Um, Do you want to oh. grab that and get a close up? I am camera angle apparently. Can you hear that? 
and there. Nice flaky pastry. That looks great. <laughs> you can just hear happy noises from the from the lounge. That is magic. That's a really good job, babe. You should be dead proud. After last week's disaster donuts, I'm absolutely buzzing. I know, little salty boy. In fact, I want another bake off. I'm just about to take a bite <laughs> of my first ever homemade Cornish pasty, and that's what? 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 Being salty that I'm too ahead of you now. It's the taking part that counts. <laughs> I, I, I don't. I don't count it, who's winning, who's losing. That why sort does of it stuff. look like this? I thought there was like something on my shoulder. <laughs> yes, I am happy. How hot is it? Hotter than the sun? Are you good? Yeah, it's one of the pastry from around the edge. Ah, uh, right. Okay. Well, that is mostly pastry that I've eaten, so I can't comment <laughs> on the filling. But pastry-wise, you you done good. Ah, so hot. I've had, I've bought legit Cornish pasties in Cornwall, but are nowhere near as nice as that. <gasps> pastry-wise, it's too hot. See what I'm doing on the plate. It's leaking goo on me. Butter. It's hot. Ah. Right, it's just look at it, just dripping. <laughs> I'm afraid to take a bite. It's too hot. <laughs> Look at it, like, just, it's, ah, oh, it's so hot. Come on then. <laughs> I'll squeeze the bathroom light on. Oscar, can you go and make sure the bathroom light's on for Phoebe, please? Good job. That is really tasty. The potatoes are done really nicely. The Swede probably could have done a little bit longer, but it's nice. It's a really good flavour. Mm -hmm. I think it's actually uh, the in, the insides are better than the ones we had when we went down to Cornwall. But I really? don't really like Cornish pasties. That is high acclaim because we went to Philps in Hale and I didn't they, rate anyone in those was, pasties. I know, but I didn't rate it. It was more potato than anything else. I was a bit disappointed, everybody raved about it and then we sat on that pier and it was just like, oh, <laughs> a meat pie. <laughs> what? I'm, I'm a foreigner, I don't understand it. Come over here moaning about our culture and our cuisine. You moaned about my culture. You guys haven't seen the video yet, but he tries some of my Zimbabwean food. He makes some horrible comments. <laughs> He even just offered to send like sweets and things to... Yeah. Do you know, I told my dad about it. And he was like, he didn't like things. And I was like, no, he said they were like cardboard. He's like, that's better than sliced bread. See? Another Zimbabwean gets it. I guess someone else <laughs> with no taste buds. They, they, don't, they, don't do, they don't even do spice in Zimbabwe. They do. I if thought it's just because the... it's Africa, it'd all be like bird's eye chilies and things like that. It probably is nowadays. But remember when I grew up, there was food shortages. Like, they, they, you walk into the supermarket and it was empty. All you could get was like bottled water, dog biscuits which are actually human edible. They're not actual dog biscuits. They were the off cuts of oh. like the funny shaped biscuits. I just got a bit of meat. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> oh. You know what? You're just having ecstasy on that. I'm, I'm you know, waiting until we sit down. I feel uncomfortable standing and eating. If I could do savory stuff every week, I think I'd be smashing this competition. I struggle with the, the cake. There's nothing wrong with doing savoury. You said that mine was a really grown up cake. You went for super sweet. I mean savoury like this. Full of meat. Savoury like this. As a, as a, the only thing I think... You know stopping you from doing like a... Like you can do a beetroot cupcake. The only thing I don't think I've done well is crimping the edges of the pasty, which is an actual art form. Apparently. But it's stayed closed. It's not leaked all of the uh, insides out. No. I'm absolutely buzzing with that and I love Cornish pasties. Yeah, you should be too proud. Work for me. <laughs> Yours was nice for the second week on the run you did custard. Someone's sorry. <laughs> I'm not sorry. I made it from scratch. I know, I made that from scratch. You made the pastry from scratch. I grew the sweet. No, you did not. <laughs> He's trying to wake. <laughs> Right. Vote for me. I made two parts. 
from scratch. He chopped up some veg and made some pastry. <laughs> pastry? pastry? Pastry, pastry. Well, you guys vote because as soon as this video comes out, there's going to be a poll and come on. <laughs> come on. But I'm not just saying it because it's me. I know. I love Cornish pasties and if I bought that in a shop, I'd be very happy with it. Yeah, if I paid for that, I would be happy. Yeah. I wouldn't have felt that I had wasted my money. You've done a really yeah. good job. It's a really nice pastry. It's got a nice solid bottom, those soggy bottoms we have here. Yeah. And we are leading into the semi-finals. Yeah. I oh, know. So excited. So it's going to get real. After this one, there's two left for us, isn't and it? Literally two left. So... Then I could have my life back on a Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we'll find something else to fill the time. We do hmm. usually. But that means I'm two ahead. So if you win the next two, we'll have to we'll have, have, have a, a sudden, sudden death. Yeah. That'll be interesting. Hmm. We'll have to put up a poll. So if, um, we're not encouraging you to just vote so that we get to sudden death. Google. I am. <laughs> I am. Vote for me for the next two and then we have to do a third. No. And, it, and then people can decide what they want us to do. Well, that, that's it. We're going to put a poll out and they have to choose what yeah. What we do. But we are going to continue this next year. I, I really enjoy doing this yeah. series like loads. Well, I would like us to continue doing food content anyway. Yeah. Like cooking for each other, baking, yeah. but just on a more relaxed time yeah. scale, that's all, because it's a lot. Well, yeah. It well, I, I would like to get some mealy meal and make you some sadza. That sounds... Zimbabwe. So the South Africans call it pup, we call it sadza. We're going to sign off. We're going to sign off before <laughs> I get roped into eating some weird stuff. Um, cheers for that one, guys. Don't forget, a vote for Dave is a vote for freedom, democracy, um, hard work. It's just it's all the good things in life. Um, I'd just like to thank my agent. Um, How about we vote for Ash because I'm <laughs> I'm a, a scientist. Like I help save people's lives. <laughs> I'm a contractor to the NHS. True. Yeah, but you're not a scientist. I am. Huh? <laughs> Cheers for that one, guys. We'll Catch see you on the next one. one. <laughs>